Chelsea proved in SS2 that she is a great player. She knows how to subtly navigate through a survival camp without getting too big of a target on her back. And out of all the returning players this se or out of all the returning winners this season, if I thought one of them could win a second time, I put my money on Chelsea. Do I think Sherry can win this game? No. I don't think Sherry has the capability of getting people to like her enough to vote for her in a jury vote. However, that being said, Sherry is very capable of convincing people to join her cause, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if she spearheaded a majority alliance and rode it all the way to the final three. Pete has one distinct advantage over the other players this season, and that is the fact that he doesn't have a big reputation or target on his back. Pete competed back in SS1 and SS2, but he has managed to stay out of the limelight, and I think if he plays his cards right, he can sit back while the other big players kill each other off, and he could easily waltz to the end like he did in SS1. Natalie is fairly new to Summer Survivor, however, she made a name for herself in SS5. She was at the center of a lot of drama, but I think she's learned from those mistakes in SS5 and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a whole new side of Natalie this season. I think there are two possibilities for Ian this season. One, he'll either make it very far in the game, or two, he'll be out pre-merge. Uh, Ian just naturally makes some people not like him, so he needs to tap into his SS3 gameplay and find a way to survive receiving votes, because I think if he does go to Redemption Island, I don't think he has the physical ability to survive and return to the game. Malcolm is a player who is often overlooked in camps, which is very beneficial to his own game. Uh, Malcolm naturally is a very likable player, perhaps one of the most likable players in SS history. Uh, if he can find a way to make it to the end, I don't think he'd have a pro any problem convincing a jury to vote for him to win. His problem is trying to find someone who will help him get to the end. Abby Maria played a near flawless game in SS4. She's a triple threat in the game, and her competitors back in SS4 overlooked her until it was too late. Unfortunately for her, I don't think her competitors are going to overlook her this season. She might have had the ability to handedly win SS4, but I don't know how she'll fare against an all-star cast. Brett has one of the best track records in SS. I mean, he won the game before, and yet I think for this season he'll still fare better than most people. And that's because he's been quite detached in the community lately. He hasn't gotten bogged down in petty drama like lots of other people, so if the camp splits into a bitter war, which I think it will, I think Brett has the potential to walk in the middle and possibly make his way to the end again. RC played a really great game in SS1, but then she turned around and flopped in SS2, so it's hard for me to say how she'll do in SS6, because I really don't know. I think she has the potential to go far, but if she doesn't lot herself in with the right alliance, I can see her leaving early as well. I think the only thing Tyson has going for him this season is that there are bigger fish to fry than himself. However, he has the unusual knack of getting fired up and saying things that piss people off, so I wouldn't be surprised if he got targeted early on, so I think it's crucial for Tyson this season to hold his tongue, because if he doesn't, he's a goner. I think Sugar is probably one of the biggest question marks this season. She did a really good job navigating herself to the final two in SS2, and she proved to be a cutthroat player. I just think that Sugar really needs to do what she did at the final four in SS2, and not be afraid to make a big move. If she plays the game smart, but also makes big moves like she did before, I wouldn't be surprised to see her go far again. Stephanie is another question mark this season. She didn't make it incredibly far in SS5, However, I think that may serve her well this season. Uh, Steph doesn't have a big target on her back, and she knows how to play the game smart so that she doesn't put a target on her back. I think she is a lot smarter and stronger of a player than anyone expects or gives her credit, and I think she'll go far this season. I think Steven is going to have an uphill battle this season. He's a great player, no doubt, but the thing is, everyone knows he's a great player, so the target on his back will be huge and probably insurmountable. The only way I see him getting really deep into the game is by banking on Redemption Island. I think he has too big of a target to make it any, way, any other way. Kim is another great player, and had she not been screwed at the Final Four uh, in SS2, she very likely would have won. Uh, however, the 
The difference between SS2 and SS6 Kim is that a lot more people know she's a threat, so she's going to have to be careful this season. She also needs to be sure not to make a move too early in the game. Uh, that's what led to her demise in SS4. She made a move too early and got blasted, so Kim just needs to be patient and smile and nod. If she does that, she can go far and potentially win. Jervis is known for his incredibly long confessionals from SS5, and although he is a nice guy, I don't think people perceive him as like a legit player. So I think he, if he has any shot at winning the season, he has to prove to people that he is truly a strategic player. If he doesn't make a move, people won't respect his game at the end, and he won't win. Russell is obviously a strong player, but the thing is, everyone knows his tricks and how he approaches the game. He has a huge target heading into this season, and it's going to be extremely difficult for him to lose that target. I don't think even sitting back and remaining detached will rid him of this target. I think he has to go and balls to the walls this season, and even then, I don't think he'll make it to the top. I think if the players this season were smart, they would be very wary of Matt. He may not have that great of a track record for SS, but he is a very, very smart player, smarter than anyone gives him credit, and I think that if there was any dark horse this season, I'd say it would be Matt. I won't be surprised at all if he makes it to the end and wins. Sandra is a hard player to analyze, and I think the reason why is because as a player, she's pretty much a chameleon. She doesn't really identify with a set group of people or friends, so I have no idea how she will play this game or who she'll align with. I think it'll end up being her having to balance between two opposing alliances, but uh, I really have no idea how she's going to approach the game. Lex was voted out really early in SS4, but he then returned in SS5 and proved to everyone that he's actually a really strong player. Uh, he's very strong in challenges especially, but I think his biggest struggle this season will be socializing with people. I think he has a hard time working with people that annoy him, and in this game, it's so important to keep a smile on your face and not let people really know how you feel. So that will be Lex's challenge, being able to work and deal with people he doesn't like. Lisa has proved that she's an all-around great player, she's strong in challenges, smart strategically, and she's really likable. However, it'll be hard for her this season because, like other players, people know she's a threat. And I also think people will peg Lisa as being with a certain crowd, so she needs to battle that stigma and talk and potentially work with unexpected allies, because sometimes the most unexpected alliances work the best. <laughs>